Today we're taking a look at uh, damage over time. Uh, so damage over time utilizes stat eff status effects, and all the different status effects are poison, bleeding, burning, fr freeze, stun, immobilization, and slowdown. So what I'm going to be utilizing is uh, poison, bleeding, and burning. Uh, so the poison is going to be coming from the alchemic carbine, and maybe if I get lucky during this run, uh, the kudos bow. Um, I'm also going to be uh, taking advantage of the mark from the Hakuto's bow and the depleting damage from that as well. So, right there, you can already tell, like, yeah, like this is going to be doing a lot of damage to mobs because that mark spreads and I can go around and move everywhere. Um, I can take advantage of the fact that, yeah, like the enemies are not going to uh, be surviving very long, even if they aggro me from anywhere. So, a couple things to note is that, one, this run is going to have to uh, be um, very efficient in terms of my platforming. So what I mean by that is, because enemies will not be dying right away, I have to make sure that when I do platform, I can move around, I can um, find spaces to uh, rest. Even if they do aggro me, that's fine, which you can already see right here. But it, they have short lifespans because of that. Like, they don't survive that. So even if that Rampager wants to come jump over to where I am, he's going to die by the time he starts running towards me. This is a brutality focus run. You can absolutely do this run in uh, tactics. I don't, I don't recommend it just because... Uh, tactics is very frail, and then you have to jump around a lot. Uh, brutality is can be a little bit fragile at times, but it's not as bad as tactics. You can take you can take um, out of maybe ten hits from uh, survival. Maybe you can take like three or four hits from tactics, and you can take maybe five or six hits from uh, brutality. So the al alchemic carbine is pretty much the king of this run. Uh, the Kudos Bow will do that uh, mark damage, and then I'll be able to get that spread damage from uh, my Carbine. See, Elites get shredded pretty quickly, and it's uh, very fun to watch. It's very fun to do as well. Like, very satisfying. So it doesn't actually matter in which order you decide to uh, use the Hakuto's Bow and Alchemic Carbine. I just do square and then triangle. Sometimes you can do triangle and then square. It honestly doesn't matter uh, what order you do it in because either way they're getting poisoned, either way they're getting um, that uh, quick mark. It's just whatever you need to do at the time. So that can be a little bit tricky. Um, it's especially when it comes to um, you know, mob control. So do I want to use the Hakuto's Bow first? Do I want to use the Carbine first just to get off some damage and then run away? Then I can use the Hakuto's Bow. It really is situational, but uh, either order, it doesn't, it's, it essentially doesn't matter. So even on that down smash, it'll be uh, impacted by Hakuto's Bow. So I will be taking advantage of that a lot in this run. Anything that can meet any sort of status, I'm happy with. So shield bearers will get hit by poison. That's very important to note. Um, it's just that they won't get hit by the shot, but then they'll be affected by that toxic cloud. So I decided to go to toxic sewers. I'm taking a little bit of a different route here just because I'm a lot more confident in damage over time than any other uh, build. Uh, that confidence will slowly be dwindled away. Um, and you can, that's a, and diving into that poison is already kind of a bad omen. Um, I dip my toes in the poison for good luck. Um, that's definitely what it was. It definitely wasn't that I messed up.
Mutations won't be your typical brutality mutation. They're going to go a little more bulky. So Soldier's Resistance is the first thing I'm taking because I want to uh, have some malaise control on this run. I, I also really like Combo because I get more DPS, which means Akuda's Bow and Alchemic Carbine do a ton more damage. The route I decide to take here is going to be a little bit weird. Um, I like Toxic Sewers for this because it's a more enclosed space, which means I get more uh, mob control. And the enemies are a little more fragile, so uh, no failed experiments. Um, I already kind of messed up because the biter hit me, but that's okay. Um, that just kind of comes with things sometimes. I just have to make sure I don't get hit when I'm cursed. Um, I wait for the Rampager to crawl under that so I can knock it out. And both, all enemies in this map are fragile, including Rampagers. They're probably the most bulky ones. Um, the biggest pain is probably going to be those uh, Buzz Cutters, I think that's what they're called. Um, I, they're just another bad enemy, but they're a little more bulky than most of those flying enemies. Uh, some of the flying enemies are um, that little um, kind of, it's like a flying, it's like a dragonfly. Um, you probably know it from a Zero Boss Cell and the earlier Boss Cells. Um, it doesn't really exist in uh, later difficulties. Um, there's obviously Kamikazes, which are easy to kill on this build uh, because of it dives to Toxic Cloud. Um, there's the Sewer Flies in Graveyard. There's uh, And there's one more. There's the Sewer Flies. And there's also the Pirouette Zombies, and then there's the Zombies that are in... Um, the little biters, the little worms in Stilt Village. All of them die pretty quickly, but the, the bulkiest one is the one that you're going to be seeing here and in uh, Ramparts. And while they aren't bulky at all, I still have to keep in mind that, hey, like, I'm going to have to uh, do, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. And again, it's just going to come down to good platforming on my part. I always thought that the area was, like, really nicely designed. Uh, some of the lore rooms are just straight up beautiful, and I enjoy going into them sometimes. Um, not not if it becomes a total pain. So those biters are going to be a bit of an issue for me in this run. I can knock them out quickly, but I just have to keep in mind that yeah, like they are. I just have to be mindful of them throughout the course of this run. So I wanted to get myself a little bit of uh, health back with the uh, vampirism, plus I get the inflammable oil, bada bing, got everything done. Uh, phaser is kind of useless on this run, but hey, it was legendary, so why not take it? And it's not like I was going to need the vampirism any, at any point. So one thing I really like is that those uh, the little worms, those little guys, they will... Uh, aggro to you as soon as they spawn. So what that means is they'll be. Um, I pretty much can uh, take them out. I have advantage right away, so that actually makes this easier than other boss cells, especially three boss cells. Four and five are the same outside of Astrolab and Collector. So that's a situation where I decided to go with Alchemic Carbine first instead of Kudos Bow because I wanted to get the damage off and I knew other enemies were going to spawn. So that creates a toxic cloud. After that, what I can do is uh, take care of the enemies with the food as well, finish them off pretty quickly. So I wasn't expecting him to aggro right here, but I, it was kind of a pain, but these uh, zombies do die quickly, and it's actually good that I'm getting these curses out of the way right away because I'm going to go for two curse chests later on. I'm going to have 20 plus enemies to kill, and I'm going to really need to uh, stay away from elites, especially those, especially on the turrets. Zombies are easy to dodge. It's just sometimes they tend to be a little overwhelming. So that's another thing I need to watch out for is poison damage. I don't want to fall into the poison right away. So 
anyways, r Rampage are pretty easy to dodge. All you have to do is just roll past them. Um, but in a mob, they can be very difficult because rolling away sometimes means you're getting hit. And in later, um, in later levels like High Peak Castle and Stilt Village, that means that you have to uh, roll, you have to kind of jump around and Rampages can hit you and that could be the end of the run, especially for me, who likes playing as, with Glass Cannon type of builds. Um, and I said this in the last video, uh, break the doors when you're in uh, Toxic Gurus for the uh, curses because you don't want to fall in the poison because right there, uh, the Toxic is right next to the door. And if you have bad timing and you try to break the door, uh, you're, you're going to die. Because toxic damage is, uh, yes, it's damage over time for you, but it also will uh, un unfortunately impact you, and you will be dead. Darkness in Sepulchre doesn't, though, so that's important to note. So that's where the phaser can be fairly useful, but there are definitely better options out there. Like I said earlier, the only reason I got it is because it was a legendary. I'm waiting on something that can do more damage over time. So ideally something would bleed. Um, maybe even bleed propagation would be nice. Yeah, so there was no uh, avoiding getting hit there, um, and luckily those lasers just don't really do a lot to you. Even on tactics kill, they maybe only do like 20%. And for me, it was kind of negligible damage. Hakuto's bow kind of somewhat uh, auto-aims. It doesn't really auto-aim, but it will auto-aim those bats, kind of if they're on a somewhat parallel plane to you. So you can go ahead and then shoot them with the bow. So we have the second curse coming up. It's two curses in uh, Toxic Sewers, which is why I went here. Um, it was a better option for me than it was for uh, going to uh, Toxic or to uh, Promenade and then Prisoner's Depths, because damage over time builds are a bit slower and they're not as efficient. So Corrupted Power is really good on this build. Um, I should make a note of that. I almost died right there because of the uh, because of the little uh, the bat. Or not the bat, the little worm. But I didn't. Um, I was able to avoid it just in time. They do attack slowly, which is nice. And that's... And again, that's why sometimes it's better to have the damage from uh, Carbine before you do the Kudos Bow because Cloud was already there, the Worm went into there, all I needed to do is just hit it with the Kudos Bow and it quickly dies. Curse is cleared from there. And what's important to note is that the Kudos Bow for enemies like that will end up uh, killing them. So, and it will spread that mark. So that's uh, very important to note. So I just hang up on there, wait for him to die, and then uh, fi finish off those last two enemies. And then now I have my grenade. And this is nice because now I get inflammable oil, which you can only get on legendary affixes. And I get 100% damage uh, taken and dealt. Uh, this is going to do a ton for my run. And now this run was working, but now we can really see this run is going into high gear. So I don't even need to use Hakuto's bow right there. That damage is ridiculously nice.
So in most circumstances, I would have taken that Cleveler and replaced the uh, double red fire grenade, but I decided not to because I figured I would get something better later on. So Carbine doesn't really auto-aim either, but it is nice to have. Because it can do stuff like that to bats. So I decided to uh, head down to Ramparts because I, as much as I would love to go to Ancient Sewers for this run, uh, Ramparts will give me more scrolls at the end of the day. Uh, and it's the same amount of curses, but it'll just be more efficient for me to go to Ramparts and then fight uh, Conjunctivius if that's, what if that's what I decide. Or even uh, the Concierge if that's what I want to do. Either way, this build is uh, going pretty well so far. I take Acceptance here. Uh, because I will have at least two curses to deal with in Ramparts. So I just want to uh, get those done, cleared, over with. Um, there's a there's a mob that will happen. It's a trio. So it's the Cannibal, which is the guy with the swords, the Rampager, and then the new enemy. Um, it's a little snail-looking guy. He shoots the shockwave, same as the Concierge. And the thing is, for Rampager, is I like the way they designed this. So for the, the Rampager, you have to roll past him. For the... Um, for the little snail guy, for the one you see right there, you have to jump. And you can't jump for Rampager. Unless you have multiple jumps, of course. Or you time it really well. But for Cannibal, if you jump, you're getting hit. So, it's tricky. So you have to kind of make use of your skills. So we're going to see right away on the curse that I'm going to have to be pretty smart about how to decide to platform So I thought about going with the worms for a quick second, but then I saw that it was going to be green, so I decided, okay, we're just going to stick with two fire grenades that I have for now. Um, I do opt for going for the knife dance because it has kind of what I want in a build, plus it uh, gives me bleed. So now I have all three. Um, um, now I have all three damage boosters, so I should be good. And knife dance actually will help with bombers, so especially bomber leads. Um, I should be okay. So, I do get kind of lucky with that aggro right there. Um, I was a little worried that the that the Inquisitor was going to knock me. But, nope, doesn't happen. I end up, uh, okay, I clear the curse, I'm good to go. Inquisitors are scary sometimes. They are, they are not easy enemies. So Hakuto's bow is one of the weapons that will knock down a uh, bomber from his place. And that's really convenient. Inquisitors scare me. Like, I, I have difficulty with them sometimes because they're always in the most inopportune places for me. So again, with this build, it's all about good platforming. So right there, I'm able to, I'm able to dodge that uh, big mob, and then uh, from there, I can just uh, kind of move on. But I also do have to kind of run around for a little bit. I have to get to a platform where I have the distinct advantage over the enemies. So I do get the straight curse. I think it's about like a third chance that I'm getting that. 
Um, so now I have another five enemies to kill, but that means that I'll have one more curse chest after this, and that is the three cell door. So now I drop the bomb, that's three enemies right there, and now I just have one left. So now I'm going to wait for the bomber to drop, and um, I should be good to go. And I do have bleed propagation on that knife dance. Very important to note. So one other thing to note is that with the shockwave from that enemy, from the... Uh, I forget what it's called, but the little uh, concierge guy. Um, when it dies, the shockwave does end. So unfortunately, uh, that kind of got me pretty good. Um, so now I'm gonna end up taking the. Um, I'm gonna end up taking the little uh, the chicken wing, or is it turkey or something like that? Um, so I am gonna end up taking it. That will give me a curse, but it will bring me back to full health. So what's funny is that Knife Dance has a pretty bad reputation for lower boss cells, and it's not that great on lower boss cells, but in later on it's actually one of the best damage over time uh, skills that there are. And you're going to see later on in the run, and you probably even saw it here, like how useful it is. Especially with Bleed Propagation, but you don't necessarily need Bleed Propagation. Those, those buzz cutters can be a pain sometimes. So you cannot roll past that enemy, which is a major pain. I leave those three enemies right there because later on I do want to um, take advantage of the curse. I know that there's no elites right there, so might as well uh, take advantage of that while I can. I'm sitting pretty good with uh, my main stat. Um, and overall, like Ramparts is not going amazing for me at the moment. but. It is doing the job. So that one, so that, um, so that one grenade does that much damage. And it's pretty amazing. So Alchemic Carbine has a pretty unbelievably good range, and that actually helped me out big time right there. So I wasn't expecting that guy to aggro me, but I, I was able to sm uh, smoke him out just in time. That was a pretty clutch kill right there. Um, I decided just to go with the better Hukudo's bow. Either way, for me it works because I'm getting uh, plus I'm getting plus two red on both, so it doesn't really matter. So nothing really changes except I just get better damage output.
Ideally, I would like to get 60, but it's going to be tough because I've gotten hit quite a lot already. So with bombers, yes, you can deal with them on smaller platforms, but oftentimes it's just bigger to... Uh, it's just a lot better to hit them on a larger platform because you have more room to roll, and then, especially on a ranged uh, build, you can just kind of go for them right away. Even on Brutality, you can always just run towards them. So now I have all three uh, synergies on him. Unfortunately, I lose the 60 right there because of the upward laser. That's very unfortunate for me because I was on a roll. But those elite abilities can be kind of a pain to deal with sometimes. I'm not... I don't like how some of them are just kind of inavo uh, unavoidable sometimes. Especially the turret laser. That one is the worst. And like some of them I think need a fix, like the like the box can still be a pain. Um, the box is probably the worst, I would say, as far as kind of unfair abilities. Um, I would also say that the... I would also say that the... Um, there's one other that I don't like, it's the shield. The shield can be pretty bad. There's some that are okay, like the, the aura is not that bad. Um, just because you have time to roll out of there. Uh, the double one is totally fine as well. I don't have an issue with that. That leaves me with one more enemy to kill. Uh, and then I'm done with the curse. Uh, so I decide to just kind of uh, go back to that place where I was before. And just finish out the curse. So I'm done with curse chests for this level. If this was an electric whip run, that would be an amazing grab. Or even a normal run, I would have definitely taken that because I do like the electric whip a lot, but this was just not the run for it. Uh, so that is the end of this level. I'm just going to kind of run in there and go into the stun grenade area. Um, so side note for uh, new players, uh, that area is where you will get the stun grenade uh, blueprint. Um, it's I think is a highly, highly underrated um, skill. But either way, um, stun grenades over there. There's another um, one at the end where you can get nerves of steel. That'll typically be, I think, at the um, the first run that you do, or I think it, I think it's uh, randomly generated, no matter what. Either way, um, you can also get that uh, blueprint over there. And in lieu of those uh, blueprints, you can end up getting uh, just gems instead. Money is always nice to have in this game. And when you play this game enough, you'll find out where kind of the hidden rooms are, where uh, all the hidden gems are, and even like down smashing certain areas so that you can uh, you can go ahead and get uh, certain gems or food or whatever you need. So concierge time, I decided not to go to uh, the Conjunctibius. It's either or, it would have been an okay build uh, to do either on. Damage over time works with almost all bosses. It works with all bosses, honestly. It's just that the fights will be a little bit longer. So like I said, it's just about good platforming.
So it's pretty much going to be this for the next probably minute or so. His health is slowly dwindling away. And that's a perfect fight. So now I'm going to get a legendary item. Gives me three stats. And that should bolster my um, health. And it should be able to uh, give me some nice little affixes. So that Hokuto's bow is looking real nice right now. So with this, I get a higher level fire grenade. I don't have to deal with 100% damage taken. And I also get the same affix with oil. And it's, in general, going to do me a ton of favors. So I opt for Slumbering Sanctuary, which I usually don't do. I like Stilt Village a little bit more because I get more scrolls. But I'm very confident in this build right now. Very, very confident. Especially because I have Toxic Clouds with my Hukudo's bow now, so a lot of things will be taken out in one shot. So I decided just to climb up to give myself more of an open space so I can fight this thing. So those are pretty easy to fight. All you have to do in reality is just jump over the little energy balls. Um, it's not that big of a deal with the fight. It just depends on what her elite is. And one of the big problems is on brutality builds, on melee builds especially, she's a, uh, a little bit tougher because you have to kind of deal with her from a range, which is difficult because she's not a she's not a um, she's not very brutality friendly. She's not very melee friendly. Excuse me, because as you've already seen, like she'll uh, kind of teleport away from you. So I actually don't know what happened to her. I don't know why she aggroed or why she never aggroed towards me. So I went in there first because I wanted to see if there were any, any enemies, because if I need to go grab health later on, then it would be a good idea to uh, go grab, uh, go kill the enemies there right now, and then afterwards um, come back, defeat the remaining enemies, because in uh, Slumbering Sanctuary, those enemies will kind of uh, respawn as new enemies, if that makes any sense. So I'll kill the enemies that are there for now. But there weren't any enemies, so I should be able to get in there pretty easily. So one of, one of my problems with Slumbering Sanctuary is typically that it is kind of difficult to assess that particular portion with the, with the regular chest. So I do make it past that little um, spike puzzle, but it is a little bit of a pain sometimes to deal with. 
So I was not expecting to get hit there, but when you're rolling away from enemies, that, that tends to happen. So that's it as far as the first wave of enemies concerned, but you can already see this level is going to be taking a turn for the worst. And I actually do lose my way a little bit. Um, I really wanted to find those curse chests before, but unfortunately because it's roguelike, these levels are kind of randomly generated, so I wasn't able to find the curse chest. So they're going to be later on. So fortunately, I do find it here, um, and one of the things is sometimes in Slumbering Sanctuary, you don't realize that there's more to the level than what you realize. So past shops, there can be things, past that little part with the uh, open chest, uh, there can be some stuff. It just really depends. So I decided just to go back in there because I'm going to have to fight them at some point, and I am very proud of myself for that one because I almost always get hit by those. So I was shocked, completely shocked that I was able to survive that. And that's one more. I probably could have used the fire, I probably could have used my uh, knife dance right there and hung out on the ledge, but you know, I didn't, that's fine. It's no biggie. So now it's our second and final curse chest at this level. So with those open curse, with the uh, kind of open curse chest, and by open I mean there's no cell door behind it. So with the open curse chest in Slumbering Sanctuary, it is always there. It's like graveyard where and it's like graveyard and clock tower. There's always open curse chests there. And there's one behind the one cell door. So this was a little ill advised on my part. I should have uh, activated that little um, I think it's a transporter or something. I'm not entirely sure what it is. But I should have activated that first and then gone and gotten the curse chest. That was not great work on my part. So this, this was not fun. I'm going to be completely honest right now. But we survive. That's that's what matters. That was good. That was good platforming on my part. And again, that's just damage over time builds. Like you have to have good platforming. I almost get screwed by the little protector right there. Uh, but again, again, like with damage over time builds, you really have to find out how are you going to deal with certain certain things like that. That that stuff is going to happen.
It's funny because this was actually my favorite level in 1.0, but I don't really go here anymore because still offers more for me. But the curses are done. Now I can kind of go through the rest of the level. It's not the easiest level in the world, but now I can actually go and see whatever's in that uh, curse chest. Or not in the curse chest, in that open chest. Um, nothing that I really wanted. Um, I like my alchemic carbine right now. It'll really take something for me. Some, like, kind of rare affix for me to really, really want to take it. So the worms are actually doing a bit of work right now um, because they are aggroing enemies and that's helping me see where enemies are at the moment. It's been very, very helpful for me, at least so far. So that's a 60 right there. Um, it's not often that I get a 60 in Slumbering Sanctuary, so I was pretty proud of myself for that. Unfortunately, I have to go all the way back to the beginning. One of my big problems with this level is is the lack of transporters. I wish that there was like one other one in the beginning of the level because it is a pain to have to go back all the way to the beginning and then go all the way to wherever you want. It It's not the most fun thing in the world. So that is an elite, and I didn't realize that initially. But that should do it. That does kill him. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with the way this is going. It's kind of nice having that Okuro's bow with Toxic Cloud because it's essentially like having two uh, alchemic carbines, but one does um, one does something different than the other. So the alchemic carbine does a lot more damage, but the Hakuto's bow ensures that I'm going to be able to kill the enemies. So I was a little scared that that bombardier was going to be able to uh, throw the bombs at me from there, but he couldn't see me, so I could just get up to a higher plane and then go from and then kill that defender, uh, get my kills, and then uh, continue on with the level. That was very confusing for me. Some people just stay in the middle of that little spot and then 
uh, smash straight down. I don't do that because that scares me. Uh, I decide... I'm trying to decide where I want to go with Forgotten Sepulchre or Caverns. Uh, I ultimately do decide to go to Caverns because I want the challenge. Damage over time is fairly efficient there. Um, but the one enemy that's going to be difficult is the Ground Shaker. Now what's weird here was that all three of those items were very good. But I have to really think about what was the best for my build at that point. And if that knife dance had bleed propagation, even if it was double purple, I would have taken it because an X rated an X rated item would have been phenomenal for this build. But unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. And I don't typically go to Cavern because uh, Sepulchre is pretty OP in terms of scrolls. Uh, I can get about seven, I believe, six or seven, and I can distribute them however I feel like. So I just don't bother sometimes. So right off the bat, I end up with the Ground Shaker. Those they're not fun. I they are. So what I'm hoping the trick will be is that I get them to start um, with their four hit combo. And so their 4 hit combo is very slow, and that'll allow me to kind of get my shots off and then run away, which is kind of the staple of this build, hit, hit and run. And so those ground pounders are very similar to the giant, and I'm going to have to be careful with those as well. They'll be a little bit easier to deal with than some of the other enemies. Arbiters are also a pain, um, but with the Arbiters, I can just use the head. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Arbiters are better if you have a shield with you, but um, unfortunately I don't have a shield. Uh, I typically don't run shields now. It's funny because in uh, 1.2 I ran shields all the time, but now I don't. So now I'm going to uh, aggro those all those demons. There's a lot of them, so I'm going to aggro each and every one of them. They are, they are just as bulky as hammers, I think. They are, and they make such an obnoxious noise. I don't like it. It's very unpleasant to the ears. Because when you kill them, they still make that noise. I, I, I don't like it at all. I hope they take that out, because I, I can't not stand it one bit. So now I got the bleed propagation, and that's going to be really nice. I was not expecting to get hit there. You need to roll towards, but then the problem was I was already stuck with dealing with two demons. And if I rolled, I possibly could have gotten hit by the demon swipe. So I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place on this one. Because I need to kill both Arbiters on screen. So, fortunately, I'm in good enough range to just use my head on both of them. In 1.2, they, they were pretty overpowered. And I, I'd actually like to see Arbiters make a return. Maybe I'd like to see them in lieu of... Um, failed experiments, maybe I'd like to see them in Astrolove. I think that would be very interesting. So Arbiter Elites are actually pretty easy to deal with. They're easier than most of the um, Elites out there because they're pretty fragile. So 
I think ground shakers and hammers are two of the most uh, bulky enemies in the game. And failed experiments are annoying, but because this is a ranged build, it's a lot easier to handle. Those are kind of scary as well. Um, I don't know the exact way they aggro, or not aggro, I don't know the exactly how they work because I haven't gone to cavern as much as the other biomes. I think the only one I've been to less has been the uh, graveyard, and that's just because I don't like graveyard. Got my head there just in time, and this field experiment, or not this field experiment, this uh, ground shake is going to be tough. Especially because I have to deal with, uh, unfortunately, I have to deal with uh, the shield, which is the worst possible one. I have them at about half, and that's good for now. And here I learned that that ground pound actually does a fair amount of damage. Uh, too much damage, actually. And I'm forced to take a potion here. I take a good amount of damage, unfortunately. And that does it. I was forced into a health potion, unfortunately, but... And that actually caused my game to glitch out a little bit. Now, not glitch, but it did lag on some frames in the video. It didn't lag when I was playing it, but uh, just because there was just so much going on the screen, it just happens. And luckily for me, this is a pretty bulky build, so I'm actually okay as far as, you know, taking damage and stuff. Except for slammers, that's always tough. Ground shakers cause a lot of delays for uh, this video editing, which is what I've noticed. And it's because I'm not using a good computer for recording. I'm just not using good computer in general, it's a pretty old PC. But PCs are better than Macs for gaming, so I'm kind of forced into using it. Hopefully when I graduate school and I can actually afford things, I can start getting uh, better... I can get like a better computer. But we'll see. Maybe as a graduation present. I'll beg my parents for money. <laughs> Probably not, but um, no, I definitely want to earn that money on my own. But um, either way, I, I definitely do need a better gaming laptop if I'm going to continue doing this series. That bleed propagation is really nice. So demons have kind of weird aggro properties. I don't I'm not 100% on what they are yet, but um, they do exist, and it is a total pain. So I, I do want those demons to come down. And because Caverns is such a big level, I'm scared of finding the curse and then having to deal with an elite. Even though it's only uh, five enemies, it's still a big level. 
So you can find elites at any point, and a lot of these enemies will aggro you out of nowhere, uh, including arbiters and demons. So this is the last curse chest of the game. Caverns only has one curse chest, unless of course you take food, uh, which I'm probably gonna do at some point. Um, Shit gets scary, and I'll let this play out. You're gonna see exactly what happens to me. And unfortunately, I'm getting... I have to run for my life now. It That was not fun to deal with. And of course, my screen goes kinda crazy again because that's just kinda what happens. Um, but only two enemies left. Failed experiment, thank god. The, when failed experiments are the easiest enemy to deal with in a biome, that's when you know a level is hard. This is more difficult than Astrolab. So I was pretty proud of myself for uh, being able to handle a double slammer elite too. And a ground shaker. That It's not easy. It's, it's not easy at all. As tempting as it was to take that corrupted power, I think that the build is fine as is. Um, I might have taken it if I didn't have oil with my fire grenade, but there was just no need. I'm at 42 and I'm just praying that I can get my uh, 60 kills. I don't... It's, it's a tough task, getting 16 caverns. That's why the weapons that you get are so good. And one important note is that all the new enemies in 1.4, all the boss kind of clones, not clones, but I would kind of call them minions, I guess, um, they are all fragile. They're all pretty fragile. I would say the Royal Guard is probably the strongest, but even that's not that uh, powerful. So I finally let go of my Bleed Propagation, uh, because from here on out, Bleed Propagation isn't something that's going to benefit me as much as I would like it to. In earlier biomes it does. A uh, high peak castle, it's a pretty big level. Um, this one, it's not. So there's just no need. And plus I get double red, I get more power behind the build. 15% more power to be exact. So I'm just waiting for those little guys to come near me and then knock them out from there. I could play a little more aggressively, but I've already taken a ton of damage because of that elite ground shaker. So I'm just scared to take any more damage. So I do get the 60, so I'm going to get some pretty nice items when I uh, hit up a uh, giant. And for those of you who have never been to caverns, um, the only boss that you can face from this level is um, Giant. It's not like other biomes where you have multiple options. This is not a... There's no fork in the road in this map. So I do want to be on full health for this. So... That's a tough one to deal with because Arbiters are a pain. So the idea is I aggro the elites and that was almost the run right there. Um, I was able to dodge just in time and then I could aggro that guy. And for a while I tried to knock 
try to knock this Arbiter, but I am way, I'm way too scared. I don't play this very efficiently, and I try, I keep trying, um, eventually I decide that this is just not a good idea. Because the bomb is just not going towards Arbiter, so I have to find other enemies. And it's only two more enemies. Oh, easier said than done, right? Because I've gotten hit a lot in caverns. I've already used the health pot. So, we'll just have to see. And that's the last enemy. And I can go uh, be at peace, finally. So there are a lot of scrolls in caverns, which is really nice. And the good thing about slammers is that they will jump towards you, so they don't immediately start running. So you have a little bit of time to prepare. And in a game like Dead Cells, a second, two seconds is a lot of time. And I do want to apologize about the uh, video completely lagging earlier uh, when I was uh, battling those failed experiments right after the curse because, um, again, it, I'm just using kind of an old computer. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, so um, I do apologize for that. Um, there's nothing I can do right now. I can't really afford a new computer, but hopefully, you know, once this starts taking off a little bit, I can um, get some new uh, gear, especially a new mic. That would be very nice. And what's funny is like I still have not found the key to open that door in the four uh, in the four cell door. I just don't know where it is. I, I would need something like reveal secret walls. And giant time. This is not going to be an easy fight. Um, damage over time is good. But certain attacks by the Giants are going to be difficult because I don't have a shield. And those attacks are going to be the lasers that they shoot at you. So the key is I have to, have to, have to absolutely make sure that I do not um, get hit by any other attacks. A lot easier said than done. And I go with the double purple here because, um, yes, I have less power behind my build, but I need all the help that I can get. So I go with the ultimate bulky build because I know I'm going to take some hits. Um, I only ever no-hit giant in tactics builds. And especially like auto-target ones like magic missiles. It's the only time I ever uh, no-hit this guy. So we're off to a bad start right away. Um, I don't know why I got hit by those lasers, but um, you want to, so with the giant, he has uh, something called charges, and I'll see if I can show that, but when he gets three charges, then he does that slam attack, that can be very, very deadly, because it's difficult to avoid. So uh, I'm definitely going to get hit here, and unfortunately, I spark another, um, I spark the roar, 
which is unfortunate. And those those things coming down from the ceiling, I don't like them. I feel like they do too much damage, and they're unavoidable when you're trying to avoid other attacks, and it doesn't feel fair sometimes. And sometimes I get hit and don't know why I get hit. That's the other issue. So I'm at completely out of health potion, so I kind of have to see what I'm going to do here. Because I know one, once I get hit, it's game over for me. So I got a little lucky right there for the ending. And all I have to do is get that hand, kill that last hand, get the eye, we're done. But unfortunately, I have run out of health potions. So now I have to really think about what I'm going to do here. I always thought it was kind of hilarious how the giant flipped you off. Um, obviously, I don't show that here because I just want to get through this. I'm only at about half health. I really need to think about what I'm going to do here as far as mutations. And I'm thinking about Tainted Flask because um, Tainted Alask, or Tainted Flask, excuse me, um, I think in 1.2 it was only four elites that you had to kill, or no, two elites you had to kill. And either in 1.3 or 1.4 they changed it to four elites. So I'm taking Tainted Flask because there are four elites that I can kill right off the bat. And those are the four elites in the... Uh, in the green, blue, and yellow doors. Yellow, green-ish doors. Because there's... Technically, there's three elites. There's three elite bosses, but one of them is a double dark tracker. So that's four right off the bat. I can get my health potion, and I should be good to go. And if I ever need to use it again, there will be four elites in Astrolab as well. There's the two slammers at the end, and there's going to be uh, the two from the uh, getting the keys. And I also take Necromancy here just to uh, get some health back. Because uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get a tonic. And uh, luckily there's no Arbiters here. Um, I am going with the bulkier build, so... You know, no 40 this time. We're not going for 40. And I think ultimately that's the right call for me. Just play very, very slow and safe, because that Inquisitor is a pain to deal with. Elites are, or demons are a little bulkier than you might think they are. Um, and they can be a tremendous pain. And also, another tip for new players, do not down smash when you're trying to, um, when an Inquisitor already shoots a shot. Shame, same with Arbiters. Just don't do that. It's a stupid idea. But I do it every single time, and then I get hit, and then I get annoyed that I get hit. Worms are going crazy right now, and I love it. I love the worms. So I take minimum minimal damage right there. Um, that was kind of an unavoidable situation, unfortunately. And I get more health, which is nice. Uh, more HP, not health. In 1.2, one of the prevailing thoughts was to um, stop at around 30 um, for your main stat and then just focus on health. 
I don't typically do that. I just go for whatever the highest is. But in this case, I, I want to honor that because that's what's going to help me in this build. These elites will be a little more work than I would like them to be. So that's two out of the four that I need to do. What's funny is that I had never ever taken Tainted Flask before in any of the versions of Dead Cells. But in this case, I really had to. Having a health potion is so nice, especially against Hand of the King, where I tend to get hit more than I would like to admit. Collector's not that bad. He doesn't do that much damage, but Hand of the King does a ton of damage. This one I was very much debating on because I did get double red. I do need the power, but I feel like outside of that nearly disastrous giant fight, I needed I I need help. That's more important right now. And I'm not sure why Hukudo's bow didn't target that for the uh, Inquisitor, but. It is, I guess it is what it is, but it was still kind of annoying. So this one, I just had to more jump around. Um, that little bit of health from the RO is fine. That's not a big deal. So I do get lucky. I get the tonic. I'm back at nearly full health. Um, and I can go and do my thing now. Those, I, they need to fix that, um, because it can get very confusing as to, okay, are they actually going to drop, or are they not going to drop, and I still haven't figured that one out, so that's been a little frustrating. And that's happened to me in multiple runs, and it can, it can kill runs, especially in Astrolab when you have to deal with librarians all over the place. So I get lucky, I aggro him into the spike somehow. I don't know how I did that, but... 
So another shield enemy. Um, not worth it. Just not worth it. So we're going to go back around, go to the other side of that map, and then just go through the green door from there. Yellowish green, whatever color it is. That was nice right there. That's what the power of Knife Dance can do. And uh, killing the Thorny should get me my health flask back, and that's going to be very, very nice. The worms really, really helped. The High Peak Castle has three scrolls and then a fourth one behind the uh, key, behind the key doors. Um, I didn't mean, yeah, yeah, three scrolls, yeah. So the three scrolls are going to be two, two of them are going to be um, dual scrolls, and then one of them is going to be a, uh, a colorless scroll. The oil grenade has been a godsend for me. It really has. I do get the 60. Um, I did pretty well in High Peak Castle for the most part. The reason I use the head on those enemies and bring them upwards is because of that spike ball. If I'm bu if I'm too busy avoiding that spike ball, or I'm gonna get hit by the enemies. If I'm too busy getting hit by the enemies, 
or if I'm too busy trying to avoid the enemies, then the spike ball might hit me. So I just don't want to uh, take any risks. Take advantage of the game's mechanics when you have the opportunity to do that. That last slasher almost got me, but I rolled just in time. And that's the end of that level. I've gotten all my scrolls, I'm just gonna head for the exit now. And I have my 60. So I did pretty well in High Peak Castle, all things considered. I'm at full health, I have uh, one health flask left. I can use it against Hand of King if I need to, or I can use an Astrolab. Either way, I have this build for the rest of my run, um, and I should be okay from here on out. Again, it's tempting to get more power, but oil that burns the ground around you is just much better with my fire grenade. Because having that double synergy is its very, very useful, even at the cost of power. Because this is the damage over time build. a good start. I don't get hit in that first phase. I rarely ever do. It's the second and third phases that get me. And that's why I take that's why you take more health uh, for a build like this. So now I just kind of wait, uh, waste a little time trying to uh, get the cooldown for my knife dance back. But I also don't want Hand of the King to um, pop pop earlier than he needs to. So I'm just um, I wait until I get a little bit of left. I survive that fall. I get past the bombs. King's done. Um, played pretty well. Outside of that one hit, I played very, very well against Hand of King, which is a rarity. I'm not very good against this boss. I have died many a run to this. Especially some of the hits I took, I typically played tactics. If I had, had, if I had, had a tactics build, I would have gotten killed in pretty instantly. Um, and on that final down smash, the, the big one that he does, um, there's two ways you can go about it. So you can uh, jump to that platform, and uh, you can jump as many times as you want. Uh, make sure that you do a little delay, and you can actually survive that on um, only two jumps. Because I had an extra jump, so I took advantage of that. But typically, you can survive it on um, two jumps. You just have to time it well. Librarian shouldn't be too much trouble here. Mostly because um, Hokuto's bow should be able to target it. Um, damage over, uh, the damage over time works well uh, in my favor here. And also, 
with the uh, alchemic carbine, it is a toxic cloud, so uh, she may end up hitting that toxic cloud, and um, it'll help me out big time. Like right there. So yes, I may have to roll once or twice, but um, because that toxic cloud was persistent, I was able to um, deal with it pretty, pretty easily. not expecting to aggro him, but I, I did what I did. And that's fine. It wasn't that much damage, and Necromancy should be able to get me that health back. That's why Toxic Clouds in Damage Over Time builds are so uh, useful, because Librarians will kind of uh, float into it, even if you have to deal with multiple enemies at once. And unfortunately there I miss, but there's no enemies around me, so I can just do the uh, rolling thing. It's a lot easier to deal with her than it is to deal with the actual Collector in that same attack. Uh, because she makes a big noise before she actually unleashes the attack. So that's my cue to dodge, but uh, in Collector it's fairly subtle. So there is an item that you can get in the first level called, it's like a forgotten map or something like that. I don't know the exact name. I've never used it, but that'll actually uh, show the entire biome and all the secret areas and everything too, I believe. Um, I don't like, I don't use it because it comes at the cost of one skill. I, I'm, I was thinking maybe you can use, maybe it can be like a mutation or maybe there can be an option at the beginning of every level. Uh, so we can say, oh, like, you know, you want to use, do you want to use a forgotten map, and you can only use it once per run anyways, and then uh, you can say yes, and then pay 50000 or however much you have to pay. I think that would be much more beneficial, and I would, I would probably take it, honestly, because Astrolab is a pain sometimes, not because of the enemies, but because I don't know where to go sometimes. And I had a really good run, it was a double war javelin run, which I'm actually going to be uploading next. And what ended up happening there was, unfortunately, I had to deal with um, not knowing where I was, the librarian uh, spotted me, and then I ended up falling down. I was at full HP, fell down, ended up at 1 HP because it was a tactics build. So that one I was a little confused on because I actually didn't know where the enemy was. And I didn't know why turrets were shooting at me. And then I realized it was because of the worms. Worms can cause problems sometimes. They're a blessing and a curse.
still not amazing at multitasking with that. Um, sometimes it's it's just not easy. Most of the time, I don't even want to complete the entire map for this level, but because I get so lost, I often inadvertently end up doing it anyways. I've spent some, some games I've spent 30 minutes in Astrolab be just because I don't know where to go sometimes. That was just a matter of just running away from it and then letting the DOT just uh, knock it out from there. That wasn't that big of a deal for me. It seems like I was running for my life, but in this case I actually wasn't. So a practice that I've started doing with um, in 1.4, especially because of the librarians, is instead of going through those doors right away, I'll just drop straight down because I know librarians will show up and then they're going to catch me in, 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 a, in a vulnerable position. And instead of having to uh, navigate around that and deal with the teleporters where I might end up like in unsuspecting, um, where I might end up in un unsuspecting positions, I can uh, be able to do my thing uh, and deal with enemies in a pretty efficient fashion. I don't know if that made complete sense, but that's kind of just where my mind is at the moment. I try to see if maybe double binding is a good idea. It was not. It was a very, very bad idea. Double binding on this sort of build is not conducive to um, an, an efficient run. So I just change it back, but I just wanted to try it out because I was pretty good on health. So I do see that librarian, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, aggro the failed experiment, wait for that librarian to come up, and then take care of her. That's why Carbine does so well in this build because um, that library just kind of floated towards the Toxic Cloud. And the same thing's going to happen right here, and she's going to take a good amount of damage. And then after I finish rolling, then just finish knocking her out. And that's it for librarians because they're not in the little castle because they'll aggro you outside. I 
I actually don't do that that often. So what I did there was I went right to where the laser was after I'd finished shooting and then I jumped up. Um, I usually go on the far end just because it's a little safer. Um, don't, don't, don't ever do that. It's not, it's just not good practice. Because if you get hit, then you're getting hit by all three lasers. So I have never actually gotten uh, four scrolls in the stat that I want. Never. And I've been to this level dozens of times. Maybe five dozen or six dozen times. Never once. So I, I guess you can roll through that. You just can't parry it. But you can keep your shield up and then you won't take that much damage. Of course, unless you're running tactics, but then tactics, everything takes damage. That took much longer than I was hoping. But I really wasn't scared. I was never really in any danger for that. So we're at full health. We can finally go to our favorite place in the world, the observatory, finish this off. But first... I do want an update on my weapon. I noticed one of the alchemic carbines looked real nice. Um, or so I thought. I thought I had seen an alchemic carbine. I was confusing that with uh, High Peak Castle. So I decided, okay, let's just end this. I don't want to get hit by any like floating librarians that I never killed or anything. Let's just get out of here. So you're going to see that he actually doesn't take that much damage. Um, he, he will in the first uh, couple, in the first couple phases, but by that third phase, I'm, it's going to be a lot of it's going to be dependent on me having to uh, dodge his attacks. So, so far so good against this boss. Uh, damage is kind of dwindling a little slowly than I would like. That was my first hit, I, I believe. That ball doesn't actually do that much damage, so if you get hit, no worries.
Same with the little balls that spike down. The only thing they do is that for that little spinny attack, if he does that right after, you'll probably uh, spin right into it. Especially if you run like a uh, uh, glass cannon tactics type of build. Or even brutality build. So now the damage is going a lot. And I can finish him off with one shot and we're good to go. That is it. That's the end of this run. Very challenging type of run because I had to improvise a little bit with my mutations. The Tainted Flask certainly helped during this run. Um, I never ended up using that health potion, but it greatly benefited me. And that focus on health, which I don't typically do, the focus on health uh, was a big, big boon. I survived a lot of hits that I normally wouldn't have survived on a pure brutality run. So I'm pretty happy with that. And, you know, that's it. It's a very highly recommended run. Very fun if you ever want to try it out. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys for joining me. And we'll see you next time.